Hey everybody, I'm Zach Armstrong with Lab Coats. And that is a tornado. Let's talk about it. In one of my last videos, I went over how me and a friend designed a few different types of tornado probes. Sadly, by the time we actually finished the probes, the 2022 tornado season had basically ended, and I hadn't got the opportunity to chase. Of course, if you keep up with the weather news, you know that in a stunning turn of events, the tornado season managed to reignite itself for one last hurrah on November 4th across Oklahoma and Northeast Texas. It was a fairly large tornado outbreak for this time of year, and unfortunately, at this time, there has been at least one confirmed fatality. So in this video, I'll be covering the topic of storm prediction and chasing, and showing what led up to me standing within a mile of this rain-wrapped monster. Roughly a week before the outbreak, the local news began dropping hints about possible severe weather action on Thursday, November 3rd, and Friday, November 4th. I kept an eye on the forecast for a couple of days, and by Monday, I was hitting up my storm chasing buddies to see what they were thinking. We agreed to meet up on Wednesday when the time was near to look over the models and make some preliminary decisions. We were looking at the risk for the uh, storm event that's going to be happening on Friday, and they just updated the risk. It's enhanced risk down this area of Oklahoma, Texas, and kind of Arkansas, even Louisiana. Matt's not excited because... I don't like the area that we're planning on going, man. Yeah. A lot of trees, potentially. A lot of trees, self-coverage yeah. is Although sketchy. there is some areas, we've looked at some maps. Radio's sketchy too, man. Yeah. I guess it'll just depend on where we, where we go. So right now, we're just about... I don't know, two stories underground in a computer lab, trying to plan where we're gonna be going on Friday. So, I mean, we know it's gonna be down in this area here, down southeast Oklahoma, northeast Texas kind of area. What? <laughs> I don't know, it looked like you were face palming. <laughs> I am, I'm having a mental crisis, man. Yeah, but yeah, somewhere down there. Oh. We gotta figure it out. Speaking of figure out, I feel like now would be a good time to talk about how we figure out where to look for tornadoes. It all starts with a risk map. The National Weather Service puts out risk maps like this for the entire United States more than once a day, and these will give you a general idea of what and where severe weather will occur. Once a day of interest draws nearer though, it's best to look at the data from some of the more powerful models. Pivotal Weather is an excellent website that updates hourly with data from over 20 different models. When it comes to tornadoes, the HRRR model is usually the most accurate although it's always good to compare it with the NAM or GFS models. Now, whenever I use these models, I like to either click the Significant Tornado or Supercell Composite maps under the Severe Weather Parameters tab on the left side of the screen. These show trends up to 48 hours in advance that can help you pinpoint potential tornado hotspots. The most telling information, however, usually comes from the soundings, which can be checked by clicking on a specific location. I honestly don't know enough about these things to give a detailed explanation of what to look for, but essentially, you want a graph that looks kind of like this. A storm slinky that's curvy, kind of like a kidney bean, low CINH numbers, high CAPE numbers, low LCL heights, and backing winds, indicated by these little arrow things changing direction near the bottom of the graph. Obviously, I'm not an expert in this area, so I recommend checking out some other tutorials that fully cover how you read these things. And if you'd like to learn more about weather and weather prediction from the comfort of your own home, I recommend checking out this video's sponsor, Brilliant.org. Brilliant.org is an online learning platform with over 60 different courses covering a wide variety of topics. Before storm chasing, I personally brushed up on my weather knowledge using this course on weather systems. Learning with Brilliant is super easy, even though the content is on par with some of the stuff I'm learning in college. I found the interactive multiple choice questions that are sprinkled throughout the course to be very helpful, and even if you get a question wrong on one of these, there will be a handy explanation ready to help you learn from your mistakes. With Brilliant, you can learn specific skills like calculus or chemistry, or simply challenge yourself to become a better thinker with courses like scientific thinking, which I really enjoyed. The possibilities are nearly endless with all the courses they release, and perhaps the best part is you can get started for free. Just visit brilliant.org slash labcoats or click on the link in the video description to sign up. The first 200 of you to sign up with the link below will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. Act quickly, these deals are totally worth it. Alright, quick video update. As you can see we've got all the necessary things all the necessary things in order for a successful storm chasing day. Got the probe, the main reason that we're actually going out, beverages, clothes, computer, 
and a new toy courtesy of DJI. This this will come in really handy whenever we're looking for tornadoes and we can't really see them because there's trees. So yeah. Nice. So our plan for tomorrow is to be in this kind of general area. Uh, southeast Oklahoma, northeast Texas, uh, but not too far east because, let me just pull up a map here. There's a lot of trees if you go further east, so optimally we want to stay in this kind of area with very little trees. That's kind of our general plan right now. I think we're aiming for... On the morning of the chase, I got out of class a little bit early in hopes that we could catch the storms in time. In contrast to many of the two other days that I've experienced, this particular setup was favoring early afternoon development, so time was of the essence. I apologize for any weird cuts I may have made in this video, but the driver of the vehicle we were chasing in asked to remain anonymous for personal reasons. The unnamed driver picked me up and we headed down to Slaughterville, Oklahoma to pick up Matt, our mutual friend and a trained emergency responder. You're killing me! Unnamed driver. He wants to use you as the navigator. Alright guys, let's get going, I'm excited now. On our way south to Texas, some small storms began to fire west of us, which quickly developed and went severe in the unstable atmosphere. Right now they are starting to fire off, but uh, it's too early to uh, see anything that's going off, so... Yeah, but some are going up there severe, right? Yes. Yeah. There's some storms up in, uh, was it, western? Northwestern Oklahoma, that have gone severe. But according to our data and to our sources, we're still going to the right spot in Paris, and that's it's just going to be later on in the afternoon when they'll start popping up. So yeah. it just take some time. Fortunately, our crew only experienced a few heavy downpours with no wind or hail. Another group of chasers, however, weren't so lucky and got caught up in the same storm right as it went tornadic. We were just outside of Antlers, Oklahoma at the time, and there were only a few miles behind us, which really shows how fast these storms were developing. Thankfully, nobody got hit, and we all continued on our way. You can see there's been a very significant update to the risk map. The giant red area was not there yesterday, but now it is. So we're very happy. Matthew, me, and unnamed driver. All right, we're getting close to Paris, Texas right now, and uh, there are a few storms out there, a few of them are tornadic, most of them are just severe at the moment, um, as far as since I last checked. Um, basically we're just going to go down there, get gas real quick, and uh, refuel, and basically see how things go from there, because right now, um, it's basically like a thinking planning phase, I guess, as far as I Half a mile, turn right. I will get back to you later. Before going through Paris, we stopped at a Love's gas station where everyone took a quick restroom break and I bought some 9-volt batteries for my probe, because they were somehow forgotten during packing. After that, we headed just out of town to Petty, Texas, where we parked on the side of Highway 82 to wait for the storms to make their move. I guess right now, uh, looking back towards me, the storms are kind of just past Matthew's head over here somewhere. And they're heading kind of northeast right now. And uh, they've kind of shifted a little bit more east recently, but it's still pretty northeast. Yeah, it, right now it, it's kind of just they're they're taking a northeasterly direction, which is we were we're going to stage an area that was um, more um, east than what we what the storms were initially doing. So now we're trying to head west, kind of a little bit, little by little, but not going too far. So in case they do initiate to the e to more to the east, we have that time. We have that leniency to go to both ways, if that makes sense. So we want to be in a good spot. It's like a cushion, essentially, a cushion yes. to where wherever we need to go, we'll be able to go in time to uh, intercept the storm. Although unfortunately, it seems like the storms are basically just going to look kind of like this. It's just kind of dark skies, which I mean. I can, I can vibe with dark skies if they if they look kind of cool, but if it's just gray kind of like it's out that window It might just be kind of a boring video for you guys to watch But I will say it's a great learning lesson because if you ever see storms or everything They're not all gonna look beautiful and sometimes that's a great thing because that means they're not 
too big, not too dangerous, but sometimes they can be worse things because they are covered. Like for example, there's been about two tornadic cells that have gone through this system that's been going through that have been completely rain wrapped that are just you can't see them they're gross that's over they're just gross yeah not so, necessarily photogenic no absolutely not but they're and that's exactly why they're dangerous is because you can't see them so you you can't take risk with those especially when you're chasing or just you know at home doing anything so fun stuff fun stuff for sure and if I get I guess if we can successfully get in front of one of these things deploy some probes everything will be just fine then we'll get Pete's after I'll see about updating you in a minute when things start to get closer and we know what we're doing Around this time, some of the other chasers pulled up in their vehicle to chat with us about the storms. Since it wasn't raining yet, I took my drone up for a little look around, but as you might expect, there wasn't really a lot to see. All the storms were too far out to capture on camera, but the view was still pretty impressive. Alright, it might be kind of hard to hear me with all the wind and the traffic and stuff. I'll try to cover up the microphone. But over in that direction, just north of here, there should be a decently large tornado. It's all rain wrapped though, so I can't really see jack squat. Um, as far as I know, well, Paris, Texas is that way. That way is Dallas. And there should be a fairly strong storm that is tornadic coming up from that general direction that we're going to try to intercept. At this point, I have no clue if I'm going to actually get any good footage of a tornado just because everything is so rain wrapped and dirty today but I'm gonna try my hardest so we'll see what happens definitely be deploying the probe though lab coats out not long after that little update our storms began to ramp up radar indicated that there was a rotation developing in the southern part of the storm and strengthening fast so we made our way back east to, to get in its path the group parked at a Sefco gas station to monitor the storms and further plan our attack all right, we are basically just sitting at a gas station now, trying to figure out what to do next. There's two storms right now. There's one that's down kind of close to Waco, Texas, and there's one north of that. And then there's one that's kind of looking like it wants to split off from the top of the one that's by Waco, Texas. And uh, right now it seems like we're just waiting to see what happens with them. Not really any decent idea of which one we want to go after yet. All right, Matt. What just happened? I just woke up. That's what just happened. Okay. We have a tornado warning. Well, the first one that's in our area. That's about what it looks like to so, me. It looks, looks pretty mean. Catch up with, with the storm rapidly intensifying, we started driving north to intercept the tornado. Not long after we were out of Paris, a debris ball became visible on radar. The vortex was growing even larger and at this point was wrapped in a thick curtain of rain, making it impossible to get a visual. Tree cover in the area also made viewing the storm quite difficult as we chased it further and further north. Finally, after several minutes of high-speed driving, we were out ahead of the cyclone. And as the sky grew ever darker, we cut east to intercept and deploy. It's time. Sorry, sorry, man. Come in, come in. Come on, let's go! After deploying the probes, we raced east to escape what we perceived to be the outer edge of the rotation. 
Looking back into the storm, we could see some movement in and near the rain curtains. The tornado was upon us. Oh, dude, I wish we had your binos. Oh, dude. Look yeah, at the wall cloud. There you go. And within a few minutes, it was gone. We loaded back into the car and drove back to the probes as quickly as we could. Much to my delight, I could see the light flashing on my probe indicating a successful deployment. Bringing both devices back into the car, we had Matt analyze the SD cards for data on the massive tornado. Unfortunately, the Conco probe we talked about in the last video didn't record any data whatsoever. The Mark II probe, however, was an entirely different story. This is the temperature, humidity, and pressure data collected, plotted against time. As you can see, there was little to no variation in any of the data sets. This, coupled with the fact that there was no wind damage that could be seen nearby, meant only one thing. We had missed the tornado. By the time the storm hit our probes, the funnel had receded into the clouds, and no significant variation in pressure, temperature, or humidity was measured. We briefly considered chasing another tornadic storm, but concluded that it would be dark before we could reach it. So the chase was called off for the day, and we drove home. I hope you all enjoy this little update on the Tornado Probe Project, and if so, be sure to like and share this video around. It really helps my channel. And if you want to help support me and my work, consider donating or becoming my patron on Patreon. The links, as always, are down below. A huge thanks goes out to all the Lab Coats patrons. This channel truly would not be where it is today without them. Stay safe everyone, and I'll catch you next time. Lab Coats, out.